Good day, fellow investors. I've decided to start a series that I think will be very, very valuable because it's really applicable to everyone's financial investing situation. Because if you think about the process of investing, the situation where you are in is a situation where you have extra money. And then from there, you want to get to a desired financial outcome. All in between the craziness there is the process of investing and that's why we are here from. From research to strategy to mindset to whatever helps you to reach your desired outcome. Therefore, let's immediately start with the first question I got from David here. So an issue David has is evaluating the risk of fraud in a smaller company and are there strategies I use to mitigate these kinds of unknowns, especially in markets where reporting standards might be different or less stringent? So the topic of today are 10 rules for evaluating and managing the risk of fraud when it comes to investing. Now, if you just want the accounting things and how to dig into financial statements and assets, there is a 60 page report on accounting things and how those can be manipulated on my comprehensive stock market investing course, totally free. And if you simply scroll down here to the curriculum, if you go to accounting for investors, how to spot earnings manipulation and fraud, and here you have the nice 70 page report that you can read. Also, there is one video where we discussed it a little bit more on the accounting side. In this video, I want to discuss more the strategy. You can read there if you're interested in the accounting, but if you understand the fraud investing strategy better, then you will need much, much less accounting. And if you are 90% of the population, you don't really love accounting. So let's see how can we, with a strategic approach, lower the risk of being defrauded when it comes to investing? Of course, if you get value from this, please don't be a fraud and smash that like button. And if you want to fraud me by saying that you don't know where the like button is, it is here, here, here. So smash it, click it, don't be a fraud. And let's now start with the content rule number one, the simplest one. When it comes to dealing with the devil, there is one simple, simple, simple answer. And that is don't. Leave the devil out of your investing life. Don't deal with it. Don't have fraudulent issues. And life will be good. And this solves 99% of fraud situations. Thanks for watching. Have a great investing life. And uh, well, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, but maybe you're like the 99% of us investors, you're greedy. So you want to know the other nine rules too, because yes, there can be fraud, but maybe I can make some money on it. If you're there, let's go to the next rules. And especially we're going to dig deep into the end of this video towards, okay, there is fraud, there will always be fraud. Can we manage it? What kind of levels of fraud we have? And that we'll discuss more towards the end of the video in the strategy part. But going back to rule number one, if you simply stay away from anything that smells fishy or has the potential to smell fishy, everything is much, much easier. <laughs> Especially if you don't do stupid things and invest in things that are, for example, on the muddy waters list. So muddy waters research is a short seller. So, okay. They do research, they short stock, and they discover fraud. Sometimes they are correct, sometimes they are not correct, sometimes they make money. Likely now, in the last year, they made more money. But if you look at their short reports, you can learn a lot here. And one of their reports is based on a company that we already discussed also here in a video, and that is YY. 
We actually made two videos on YY first um, investigative research discussing the targets that investment banks had. So uh, JP Morgan, everyone was lifting the target, 140 targets. So everything went up and they even say that the target is increased after the Muddy Waters short report when the stock went down. There is a special dividend, value creative actions, etc. etc. This is Wall Street against how they say on Muddy Waters doing the work that Wall Street want. And then we did the research with your feedback, we analyzed the product and we showed that it is crazy borderline fraud and for our and Muddy Waters uh, sake the performance hasn't been great. Muddy Waters shorted it earlier, then it boomed on the recommendations, but then it really crashed. So you can watch those videos. I'll put all the links in the description below of the videos I mentioned. But shorting is very difficult. And as our chat GPD helps us, saying how Muddy Waters has a mixed track record. They did some really good ones with Sino Forest and China Media Express, but also didn't make money on Burford Capital. And I don't know when they shorted YY. So it's very, very difficult. And as they say, do your own research and not solely rely on any third party reports. So on Burford Capital stock, it depends when they went short and how that did with there. When you're going short, you don't have just to be right on the direction, but also about the timing of when it's going to go down and crash. So that's a difficult business they are into. But if you want to learn more about fraud, read all the reports here and you'll be a step wiser. Now, let's go to rule number two. And as we said, strategic discussing about fraud. And it is first and foremost, if you decide to deal with the devil, it is about you, how greedy you are and how much there is fear of missing out on great opportunities. When something is clear fraud, that's clear fraud. There are red flags and everybody knows it. But the problem we have as investors is when we reach something that says maybe fraud, if it isn't fraud, it is extremely cheap. It is a great opportunity. So the question you have to ask yourself is how much do you want it not to be a fraud? So that is the risk you are incurring. You're hoping you don't want to see the red flags and you really have to understand yourself, have to understand Rule number one, why am I doing this? Why am I dealing with the devil? Am I such a greedy bastard? Am I impatient of investing well? Because if you keep in mind, rule number one, don't. But again, how much fraud do you need in your life? What is fraud? And that can be discussed by simply looking at ARK investment. I'm not saying they are fraud. I'm saying that a lot of the promises there didn't materialize and a lot of investors lost money. This doesn't mean they are fraud. But as I said, we are always in those gray waters. We don't want it to be a fraud, but that's usually the places where investors lose money. What's clearly a fraud, that's okay, that you understand it and that's completely different. But when there are these situations, we discussed this in the... 2021 peak arc video arc investment danger where i said that it is extremely risky but a lot of people unfortunately followed and lost their money but this is an excellent example of how things work in wall street how those cater to your greed if we just look at what is their research it's really really borderline reality, distributed Bitcoin mining or whatever, psychedelic therapeutics, gene editing, and ARK expected value for Zoom communications, 1,500 per share. In 2026, that's three years from now, 
Where are we now? 6970. So that's a 20 bagger there in the making. But you have to see what are the promises baked into that, how it will go even to 2000 in the bull case. And in the worst case scenario, you make 10x your money. So when it comes to investing, it's not just about fraud and clear fraud. It's about these gray areas. So Monte Carlo analysis, they don't know what the Monte Carlo is, but okay, doesn't matter. Their projections are from global hybrid, remote knowledge, workers and everything. Booming, booming, booming and making a lot of money. And yes, in the exuberant times, everything looked great, but now everything looks much, much different. We discussed other companies like I said in a video, you must be beyond sanity to invest in beyond meat. Neo owners getting screwed by Wall Street, by the Chinese government. We discussed very, what was it? Very good food stock or something that were clear frauds, especially this one. And I got destroyed by another YouTube channel because I was saying the wrong things. Well, this is the stock now down 98.33% since I made this video, but these are clear frauds. So you just read the financial statements, watch this video and you'll see, okay, this is insane, but you never know. And there are many growth stocks like we did in this video where I said the following. And many of these stocks are going to go down like this. Good. And unfortunately, that happened with many of those and with ARK. But then again, I'm not saying this is fraud as disclaimer. I'm just painting a picture around the gray lines, which is the key for strategy and which is where I think most investors fail, me included. We'll discuss that later. But why do we deal with these frauds? Because some of those promises work out. We had... Tesla, I discussed how I will not invest in Bitcoin that boomed. And let's now look at what Charlie Munger says on Bitcoin and type it into chat GPT, Charlie Munger on Bitcoin. And let's see what the AI tells us. So Charlie Munger, the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway has made several comments regarding Bitcoin. Worthless artificial gold, noxious poison, and criticize the lack of intrinsic value. Munger has also stated that he doesn't understand the reasons for existence. He also called it fraud and illusion, good for kidnappers, and that's Charlie Munger. But the question is, why do you invest in such things? You don't want it to be fraud because you are greedy, so know yourself and know what and why you are doing things. Rule number three. When it comes to fraud, as Munger said, always look at the incentive. So I just searched for the Winklevoss twins and they are Bitcoin holdlers, hold for dear life. And I really wanted to see if there is an incentive there, if there was an incentive for them to promote crypto. And I didn't even know that this was happening. However, just a while ago, they were promoting 25x gains from Bitcoin from, what was this, November 2020. And always think, okay, what's their incentive? How are they making money on this? If they make on an exchange or something like that, then you know why they are saying something and promoting. That's also a red flag. Another company that we analyzed where the incentive was clearly family owned. So suddenly low margin business, someone goes to Italy, you have a chef and that wanted to take advantage as a family of the really, really attractive IPO situation for growth stocks. Well, that also didn't go that well over time. And unfortunately, those risks were there. Now, I'm not saying this is fraud. It is 
legal, but you still lose 90% of your money. So whether you're frauded or not, maybe you feel better. Oh, it didn't work out, but the red flags were there. So I am much more afraid about the gray areas than the clear, straightforward frauds. Rule number four, as Munger says, invert, always invert. And it's remarkable how much long-term advantage people like us have gotten by trying to be consistently not stupid. So in line with rule number one, don't deal with the devil instead of being very, very intelligent. And then you can ask yourself a question, how can I use the situation to my advantage if I would be the CEO or in a position to commit fraud? Can it be stock options, bonuses, buybacks, planes, bonds, whatever? Always ask the question and then check, okay, how much of what they are doing feels good for you or when do you think it's too much? Rule number five, is a small fraud a fraud? Tesla and Solar City 2016 to combine buying out everybody. Musk owned 22%. His cousins owned the other from their cousin. And revenues of 730 million losses at 820 million. And still, Tesla went in, bought it. The judge said it wasn't. Uh, crime, it wasn't fraud, but still, did he buy it for himself, for his family, to save his behind with Tesla's shareholders money? That's something that I'll leave up to you, but these are the great areas. And yes, with Tesla it worked, with Solar City it worked, but it's very, very gray. So you have to always discuss the risk and reward and put it into the assessment. Okay, how much does the worst case scenario go wrong and how much weight it can have on the investment at all and then you balance things compare with others and that is investing after all rule number six a great business doesn't really need your money of course if it is a risky business like this one you can see the number of shares constantly getting higher promoting all things to push that stock price higher and then issue new shares at the highest possible level to get the capital. And now they say they don't need more money, but they are still losing money. They are still doing things, trying things. But again, I'm not calling this fraud, as I said three times in the video. I'm just saying that these are the risky positions that are borderline and you never know what will happen there. Rule number seven, they tell you what you want to hear, which is another red flag. For the last 40 years, the 60-40 portfolio was the essence, the foundation of Wall Street pension funds and everything. And now you ask, then, okay, that's Wall Street. Where's the fraud? Well, I call it a fraud, but uh, because people simply lost a lot of money. Because if you invest 40% of your money with bonds, at 1% and inflation at 2%, you're not going forward. And now to make even more money, they are adding long short strategies to the portfolios of bonds and uh, they are making things crazier to get their 1-2%. So always think about what's their incentive, where's the fraud and whether you want that stability for bonds and stocks and that's the easiest to sell to you instead of just going 100% stocks and then accepting more volatility but better returns. Bonds did zero the last 10 years, stocks 5x. That's life. Rule number eight, the first accounting rule, follow the cash. And I get a lot of questions, Sven, uh, stock has $6 of cash per share and the share is at 8 is it a great buy? Is it a net net value investment? Well, if the CEO doesn't give you the cash, it's like it's not there if it isn't Berkshire, of course. So always follow the cash. We'll discuss more of that in the example where I got defrauded partially. Rule number nine, research beyond. The first talk I wrote an article on Seeking Alpha and made videos here was Amira Nature Foods which was a bargain from a valuation perspective, a value investment, but unfortunately it was a value trap. And 
the CEO and directors are uh, cheating, fraud and everything. So that is what happened. But what I didn't do is this. There was a YouTube viewer and he contacted me and said he went to the shareholder meeting that was in Dusseldorf. So I should have gone to it. I didn't go because of costs and everything. And I was just starting. And maybe I didn't want to see the truth. But he went there and he said that there were just the CFO, the CEO. It was closed. They kicked him out. They gave him some rice. And that's it. So it wasn't an open shareholder meeting. This was a 400 million listed company so it was crazy but i didn't want to see it and there were many red flags short reports rule number two i wanted it not to be a fraud incentive of the ceo private transactions issues selling shares shares to family but as i said always follow the cash follow the cash and that's actually saved me it was a rice company so they have a lot of rice inventory and when prices go up, I calculated that by selling the rice they bought at lower prices, letting it ripe for eight months or something, they should have made 100 million in cash when those rice prices went up. When that happened, they didn't make any cash, which was their final red flag to me. I sold everything, didn't lose much, I think. And that saved me, but... There were four or five red flags in that situation. And if I had gone to Dusseldorf there doing my own research, I would have saved me a lot of shame in this case, a lot of negative energy. Also with Chinese stocks, uh, a few of them, somebody said just from China, Sven, I went to their office, there is nothing there. So that was clearly a sign of fraud. Muddy Waters did that by going to China, etc. And then you simply know it. So... If you think there could be a fraud and if you want to invest more money, then really, really go and dig deeper than anyone else. And also, as we did this, we simply checked the product. We dug deeper than Wall Street did. And we said that 100, it's crazy. The stock is much lower now. So investigate as much as you can if you want to break rule number one and really deal with the devil. Rule number 10, trust and investing. Let's just quote Agatha Christie. When large sums of money are concerned, it's advisable to trust nobody. So trust nobody, be wise, separate the information from the messenger. You never know where you get the information. Don't trust me. Get the information, see how it fits you. Dig deeper, always be skeptical. And that's the key rule of investing. Now, if you still want to deal with fraud, we are discussing the strategy part now. To my shame, I did invest in Russia, in China, in Argentina, and as I said, in Amira. When it comes to investing in these fraudulent situations, what saved me was knowing the risks of investing in China. The first tank I saw, I sold everything because i knew what happened in 2014 and what was likely to happen next and then when there is such risk of fraud you need to move fast when others are still greedy you need to sell when things are good typical wall street dealing with fraud a horse is brought to the veterinarian and the guy says i don't know what to do with this horse three days it's a great horse the other three days it's a crazy horse Oh, I have a solution, says the veterinarian. Oh, thank you, thank you. When it behaves well, sell it. So that's an unfortunate joke, or maybe not, but it's really something to make you think when you're dealing with the devil, move fast. The conclusion is, keep in mind, we are talking about nuances here. The truth is that there are no certainties in life and especially investing, but Investing is about navigating the above nuances and over the long term, it should be a positive sum game if you do it well, either by taking advantage of the greed of others or by enjoying the value created by the businesses that are not fraudulent. And if you patiently wait for those businesses that are not fraudulent, you can get them at a good price. Thanks for watching. This is something that really, really makes you think 
perhaps the best thing is just to stick to rule number one. And that solves a lot, a lot, a lot of problems.